excuse me. Uh, back to Truly Daybok, Daybok Cast 20, 120. Uh, we're on to part four, um, which is Andrew basically wanted to talk about just uh, the growing concert scene in the U.S. and yeah. in terms of K-pop concerts and stuff. Yeah, I thought it was appropriate considering we bought our tickets for twice um, uh, just the day before recording this, uh, recording this on a Saturday. Um, so... Just I guess we could just start off with that. Like, did you think that Twice would have a, a arena tour that's selling out in the U.S. at this point in time? Or like, if you if um, you asked if you like if I asked you like three years ago, would you have thought that Twice would have three been years ago? Over? No. Yeah. If you asked me a year and a half ago, I would have said yeah, they're the they're the only girl group that could easily do it. Um. So yeah, I I saw this coming. Um. But yeah, if you asked me. Yeah, three years ago, like, right after debut or, like, even just after Cheer Up, like, K-pop just wasn't big enough in the U.S. or that for that to happen, especially girl groups. Um, even back then, I don't think BTS could have done it. Uh, like, big arenas. I mean, sure, like, granted, the ones twice are doing, like, the one in Chicago is not a huge arena. It's but, a, I mean, in, in but New York, they're doing... still... Yeah, they're doing... They're doing the Prudential Center, and... LA they're doing the they're doing the forum which is like a huge Are they? okay yeah like that, that that's like that, Blackpink sold out the forum so like yeah, yeah. it's it's on that level of just uh yeah. venue no yeah i i if any i would have said yeah for sure twice could have done a year ago but 3 years ago no definitely not cuz i don't think anyone could have um but no yeah it's it's cool to see i'm especially it's cool especially to see with Blackpink and twice cuz girl groups don't get the recognition for concerts that yeah. guy groups do in the u.s yeah. like it's just girl groups just don't have the fans that guy groups do in in the u.s at least yeah because um, there's because most fans in america and i guess well most fake there's most k-pop fans even in korea are, are female but there are yeah. there is a large contingent of female fa- female fans that love female groups whereas yeah, that's not as US. much of a thing in the u.s most people are they only listen to boy groups well, yeah, well, and th- we've talked about this before, but that there's a stigma of like guys liking cute girl, like cute girl groups, and like everyone like, thinks you're a fucking weirdo cute things or, and stuff. Yeah, yeah like it, 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 there's a stigma against that. You only, you, all you yeah, want to do is sleep into, with them or whatever. Like just like really, yeah, like creepy or, uncle fan type stereotype things. Yeah, people just think if you're a guy that's into a girl group, you're only into it because you think they're attractive and yeah, you want to sleep with them or whatever. So then if they're like a cutesy girl group with like underage members, then people just think you're creepy or whatever. When that's not the case, like you can just like the music and just have fun listening to music or whatever. Um so yeah, there's just a stigma against girl group concerts especially in the US uh for guys listening and then yeah, girls um not as many girls here like girl groups as they do in Korea. Um, but I think that's going away uh, for the Thanks most part. Least because K-pop's getting so big, I think people are just starting to realize, like, you can just be into it because it's fun, catchy music. And, mm-hmm. like, you can be into guy groups and girl groups no matter what your gender is. Um, so, but yeah, still, like, girl groups just don't get the recognition. Like, I remember Sam talking about the OMG concert. Like, it was half empty like even just come like last York. year like and that's why they don't come like that's why the smaller girl groups never come to the u.s it's just they can't sell the tickets unfortunately and i think that's that's still in general like i think international fans don't care about the new groups nearly as much um and especially when it comes to girl groups as opposed to guy groups yeah because when it comes so, to like, new yeah, guy groups like again like like groups like Astro have been having concerts in yeah, the U.S. like their, consecutive years, yeah, so and like, they, they sell out. So like, yeah. it, even like the tiniest Nugu boy group has a following, whereas it's hard to garner a following for girl groups girl uh, unless you're a Twice, Blackpink, Red Velvet yeah, you have level. To be, you have, to, you be have be to be huge. You have to be huge. Unfortunately, I mean, yeah. Like, and even Red Velvet, I, th- I feel like, doesn't have the international fan base that Twice and Blackpink do. Like, yeah, because they I don't are think not Red Velvet could sell out an arena, stadia, like yeah, unfor- arenas. Yeah, because I mean, when, when cause they came, it was a smaller venue, right? For, yeah, and NJ- they went to NJ Pack, which is a like, a it's theater. just a theater yeah. sort of thing. So, like, I mean, yeah. granted, Monster X was there too. So, I mean, even I was gonna say, well, yeah, they did the because they did it for Chicago the. Uh, 
the fan meet that I went to, um, they were in the same venue as that Monster X does. Um, but Monster X isn't the biggest. They have, they've got a loyal fan base that'll go to their concerts every year, but they're not the they're biggest. Not, the hugest like, yeah they're yeah. not on the same level as a bts or xo or I yeah yeah know, exactly got seven yeah, or 17 NCT, well nct is probably around that similar level yeah. maybe a little bit bigger but i um, think it's just we're in an interesting position that um there's sort of a it used to be you just were the big you had to be big to come over here because i mean if you if we yeah, take a look back at like the history of just k-pop events in general in the u.s before it was strictly like stuff like KCON or just like Korean like music festivals or the one year SM had a freaking SM town in New York City or mm-hmm. just like really big groups like like um like Big Bang and Twenty One had um, Prudential Center concerts and everything so you really mm-hmm. had to be the biggest of the biggest of the biggest either had to be like big enough on your own to justify having a solo concert or you had to be part of a, like a KCON or like big festival like thing to yeah. have events here in the United States where now it feels like there's sort of a middle ground. There's a middle ground and then there's like a lower ground even where like the even mm-hmm. really tiny groups are there. Korea is starting to recognize the, both the power of the American market and the viability of the American market now that like basically like Mm -hmm. groups like BTS groups like Blackpink groups like twice groups like EXO have definitely uh, ushered in a new era where it is financially viable for a lot of groups to come over here like even if you aren't the biggest even in Korea like again hey like card isn't a big group and card is arguably arguably bigger in the americas and europe or whatever and they have a mm-hmm. following here it, it, it's they're starting to realize that you don't have to, like it, it's entirely like the bts method of winning over international fans and hoping that gets you recognition back home um yeah yeah that, that's an interesting sort of thing that like yeah there's different like levels whereas usually you could. You only had to be. You had to be big, or pretty much you'd get sparingly get concerts like that. Maybe like once a year, or twice a year yeah. if you're lucky. Now there's literally, if you look on like um, on our K-pop, there's a c- compilation list of just every K-pop event that happens um, in the United States and Europe and in other places in um, the year of 2019. And there's literally a concert every month of the year so far like some k-pop yeah. artist or rapper or something is in the coming to the united states like this year so like you th- there's no shortage at this point in all in all honesty it's, it's a very like fascinating time when you when back in when i was starting like literally it was just a special event for a group like snsd to have a fan meet here whereas like yeah groups on that level are probably going to start coming here like every year. That's that's the thing. Like it used to be where it was so hard to plan around a US tour. Now they're baking that mm-hmm. into like they're they're making time for US tours just because they know the 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 importance of the market. And are, quite honestly, like they they could, they probably make more money over here. Like if you really think about it, Korea is a small country and like you they only really like how often how often do they tour in places outside of Seoul? Like I'm not really familiar with that aspect uh, of it. They go to like Busan. There's a couple. <laughs> they tour like the major cities like 3 or 4. Yeah, that's the thing though. Like you you only have so many in when it comes to Korea. Most you, of, you only really have yeah, like I mean, what, like Seoul, Busan, like Incheon if you want to be like specific. Um, yeah, well I mean it was just the problem the other thing is like just doing it in Seoul's fine because Korea is so small that People from Busan will just yeah they'll just take, take a train the three on. three hours to take a train to Seoul and go see it. It's like not a big deal. Like it's like easier for them to go from one side of the country, country to, to Seoul deal. to see yeah. a concert than it is for me to drive to Chicago and back. And I'll I do that. So like yeah, that's the thing. Like like there's America. there's no there's no reason to take the groups to other cities when it's not that big of a country that they'll just come to you. Yeah. And I mean, I guess just in terms of like the, the Asia sphere of influence, like it's easier, it's easy for them to just fly to Japan and do his shows in like Tokyo or go to like Indonesia, Mm -hmm. Vietnam, uh, Philippines, like those, those types of like China, if they want to. Um, 
Yeah, it's a lot. It's always been easier for them to do that. But again, now with the viability, like you're seeing most artists, it's not just one date. It's usually they're usually doing the West Coast. They're doing the South. They're doing the East Coast, Pacific Northwest. Like everyone, Mm -hmm. most of the time, everyone gets uh, something close to them, except for middle America. (laughs) Unfortunately, like the Midwest usually kind of gets fucked because like they they don't always go to uh, Chicago Chicago or Detroit or. Um, any well, other big Midwest well, cities? Day six is the only group that's ever come to Detroit. Detroit. So, um, but yeah, like even Chicago doesn't always get concerts. Like the smaller concerts will just be East West Coast and Texas usually. Like Stray Kids is only East West Coast of Texas. Like I can't see Stray Kids unless I go to Newark, which I can't afford to do. That <laughs> you so you many can buy times a plane a ticket for next week, then go go right ahead. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, I think that's just an interesting, just the interesting aspect of it is how easier it is for them, and uh, that's definitely a big part of that is because there's spe- there's been a growth in specific companies that will sort of act like a middleman in terms of like yeah. organizing these concerts. Because I mean, you have subculture entertainment, you have K-pop, me, yeah, you have my one. music taste, um, you have Studio PAV or PAV who they really specialize in like small boy groups and everything like that's how VAV gets to come to the VAV and like SF9 had their own concerts and, and up tension mm-hmm. like that's how they have concerts in the US like they have it at really small venues they keep it they keep it financially viable for even these small groups so yeah it's interesting the way that the market has developed in that sort of way where it mm-hmm. yeah and i think it wouldn't I, I don't think this proliferation would have existed without those companies just making it easier because I'm sure I'm sure like freaking like SM has no idea how the hell to run concerts in the United States or how to do like all like the venues yeah. and sort of stuff. So having people that yeah, that's probably the biggest part of it is that having companies here that are familiar with um, running tours or events in the United States, just acting as that middleman has probably been a huge contributing factor as to why it, more and more companies are finding it viable to come here into the United States. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely those those companies help a lot, uh, makes it a lot easier for them. Because yeah, like you said, it's it's got to be impossible to coordinate all of the stuff related to a tour in the U.S. Because all the different venues you got to talk to and, uh, and figure out all their different restrictions and dates, everything like dates, like yeah, just figuring out all that stuff's got to be impossible. So having a middleman do it, uh, like definitely helps and it's a hundred percent uh a big reason of why this these concerts are happening more and more often especially for the smaller groups because those companies just can't even afford to figure out all this stuff yeah um, definitely like like, <laughs> like even yeah even when groups like uh 80s are touring <laughs> or yeah exactly like they're brand new group like from a company that like nobody's heard of <laughs> or even like sunmi like again remember sunmi's company yeah. isn't that big and granted she has name yeah. recognition but like her company itself isn't that big so like for yeah. her to have a viable like US tour is just what are you talking about? Wonder Girls debuted in the U.S. Sunmi's huge here. Yeah, they had a movie on Nickelodeon. And no, that's another sort of <laughs> speaking of like debut. Like that's another thing. Like before even having concerts, usually the like that was the the only viable w- method of getting like exposure or getting on here into the U.S. Uh, was yeah, that's how it used to be. Like Wonder Girls was on tour with the Jonas Brothers. Um, uh, Crayon Pop went on tour with Lady Gaga. Like, you had to just, like, attach yourself to another huge names tour just to get any, like, sort of exposure here before you could even think about having events on your own. So, yeah, it's mm-hmm. crazy just, like, how much it's grown in that sort of aspect. Um, also with dates, just, it's a lot more complicated to just organize dates around here because there's a lot more important sporting events happening in the U.S. <laughs> than there are in Korea. Because in Korea, mm-hmm. they really only give a shit about, like, baseball and that's it like jacob said he went to a soccer game for like fc soul and nobody went. <laughs> it was like the yeah, stadium yeah. was half empty which is kind of a shame because they had a big they had this big fancy world cup stadium that no one wants to use for sports or like i guess they probably only go for the national team but yeah it's yeah there's there's less big sports that are have following um in korea than they do in america so when you have like four major sports that you have to like schedule around in terms of using the venues that's why you can't get 
That's why like BTS can't get like these big venues like MetLife Stadium and like the Rose Bowl and Soldier Field. They can't get that during the win like the the fall because of football season. So that's yeah, why they have yeah, to schedule exactly. it like here and everything. So like the comp- the complexity of that's a lot definitely a lot more than you have to deal with. Also, yeah. we don't have dedicated like concert arenas. If that makes yeah, sense. I was gonna say all of, all of these stadium or like. It, other than like theaters, like, <laughs> but then you have to deal with like plays and orchestras and stuff. Like all of these stadiums are are sports stadiums. Yeah, so, like, you like deal concerts with... are never the first priority for any of the venues that they. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, or unless it's like something like the Best Buy Theater, where they, that's mostly concerts. But like in Korea, there's specific like they call them like gymnasiums or whatever. But like there's specific there's venues that are dedicated to holding these K-pop concerts and in in large scale. So yeah, that's another. That's just like a difference in because well, sports definitely makes a lot more money here than like music does, like by far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sporting events are a multi-billion dollar industry, whereas yeah, like in Korea, like music is the multi-billion dollar leading industry. So, uh, where do you th- do you think there is a future for? Groups like a, a girl groups like a Twice or a Blackpink to potentially God, hold so. I, hold like a like like stadium like football stadium level concerts. Uh, yeah, that uh, on um, because I mean I th- yeah I could I could see Blackpink doing it um for sure uh, in a couple of years if they keep if they keep putting out music if, if they, they keep put putting out, out music, music they will yeah uh, actually like keep growing um I could see it happening if two any one happens and they just they're already done putting out music like two any one was after a couple of years then they won't but yeah I I could see twice or Blackpink I I just want more I just wish smaller girl groups could viably come here because like it made me so upset that. Dreamcatcher to- did a world tour and actually did a world tour where they went to Europe and South America and Asia, like, but they didn't come to North America. Like, nobody ever goes, like, smaller girl groups Some, never go to Europe, Europe, and, most of the time. Europe and South America, but they they skipped North America. Like, I would have done anything to see Dreamcatcher. Um, so, like, I just wish that wasn't a problem. Um, because it, like you said, like we said, it's not a problem for smaller boy groups. Like they, they've been, they've been doing this for years. Um, so I just, I just wish it would be more viable for girl groups. And I, 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 I'm hopeful that it will be in the next year or two. Like it'll be okay for, like Uju Sonio to come to the U.S. or yeah, like just Chunga do a tour, like. Like mid tier, like popularity girl groups, I think at least have a chance. Um, so I'm hopeful. Yeah. Obviously, I named two IY branches. So. Of course, of course. I mean, I'd love to see a group like Uju Sonio come over here. Granted, yeah, I think Uju Sonio, like, and I, if it's they nice figure because out their Starship membership issues. I don't yeah. Know. Well, like Starship, yeah, I can't believe there's there's the Yehua concert that the two Ye- two of the three Yehua members won't be at. Uh, it's so dumb. Um, but, uh, like, Starship's shown, like, obviously they're doing great with Monstax, like, they've been touring, this is the third year in a row that they're doing a U.S. tour, or, like, a world tour, even, I think they go to, like, South America and stuff a little Mm. bit, um, so, I, I think Starship sees the, the value, or, like, the, the fact that they can make money off of these if they keep doing it, um, and so I'm hoping they can extend that to Uju Sonio. I know obviously Uju Sonio is not nearly as popular as Monster X is, um, but I think they could do okay. I think they should give them a chance at least mm. and see how it does. And then obviously they don't have to do it every year like Monster X does, but just once. Yeah, I mean, um, you could just hit the big cities like New York City. Yeah. You're gonna get, you're gonna sell out. L.A. You're gonna sell yeah. out. Like maybe like some part of Texas yeah, you're gonna sell out. Do like, one in Texas. Do like Toronto or Chicago. You probably you might not sell it out, but it'll do okay. Like, yeah, there, there, there are there like, are yeah. It's a lot more viable than it was. It doesn't have to be Monster X where you go to twenty cities or whatever, yeah. but like, just give give there give the country a shot. Yeah, Let me seriously, see yeah, like these I, girl I, groups. I, I like to see more girl groups. Yeah, just have an opportunity to showcase their themselves over here and just get on the tv shows the same way that like because again like every time there's a k-pop boy group that comes to new york city they're on our local news and everything and i'd love to see that happen for girl groups as well 
So, yeah. uh, what are your thoughts on this sort of influx of K-pop concerts in the U.S.? It's definitely, it's it's a lot easier. Are you are they still missing your, your uh, neck of the woods? Would you like them to come to like I don't know, like Des Moines, Iowa, or something like that? I don't know. Yeah. Montana. Uh, yeah, it, where would, nobody would you, lives. Yeah, would you like to see? Would you like to see more? Um, k-pop groups or which k-pop groups would you like to see start to tour in the u.s now that we have a market over here so definitely let us know yep so yeah that's it uh for episode 120 of the day podcast um like we said at the beginning of the show uh if you like it uh if you like the episode like the video subscribe on youtube follow us on twitter review us on itunes and most importantly check out our discord um you can come hang out with us we have a nice community there it's nice and small it's not a huge community um so like you're not gonna get overwhelmed with tons of messages and you get to know some cool people um and talk to us directly we're in there hanging out a lot all the time um pretty much all the time so and we do fun stuff like song ratings and we did a march madness visual bias bracket um (laughs) that type of stuff so we just do fun little things in there uh so yeah definitely come check us out there um anything any closing thoughts for you uh again yeah we really don't have anything until uh kick on uh yeah produce cast and Pretty much some point whenever because what episode two just happened yesterday yeah so they're gonna get to eliminations so, in like an episode or two episode so. three will yeah so we'll figure that out in the next couple weeks mm-hmm. but yeah definitely a lot to look forward to yep so yeah thanks for listening and goodbye stay fancy stay throbbingly fancy how did you not do that last week? I don't know. I don't know how I didn't do that. I guess I said stay jet lagged. I was too tired, so. <laughs> That's true. I know. Being members of HKT48 and Sashi being such an influential person, it just kind of sucks that they didn't have a chance to properly say goodbye to her. And I feel like, yeah, it, it sucks. And also, cause just because, you know, the stupid, like, stupid K netizens are going to be like, oh, why are they performing? Or why are they at an HKT48 concert? They're supposed to be dedicated.